there were so many unknowns at that at that point and being a small business and a big office we kind of thought well you know if it gets here well you know we'll be able to carry on surveyors you know we go out in the hills rah 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 you know we'll be fine and um, we always kind of knew that we'd find a way through it the pandemic uh, keeping up with play there that was not a not a surprise you know i think most people were were keeping up to a certain level of information in that regard i have to say it probably was a surprise i mean i, I didn't really think that i've never experienced anything like that before um i i guess as the media reports escalated throughout throughout february and and march um throughout the world and then you know, we started to have lots of cases in New Zealand. At the beginning of the year, I was on a South Island selling trip and my husband always listens to The Guardian. And so he was hearing sort of niggling rumours of it before it was really obvious in New Zealand that we were suspecting us. And so we were already pretty concerned, I think would be the word. And that last week, it was like, we're going into lockdown. What does that look like? And For us, lockdown was about five weeks long. Uh, for me, I feel uh, like I need to work when I go home. So uh, when the lockdown came into effect, I was probably running around in circles for the first few days. And it was such an, an intense week and a lot of decisions just being made. You know what I mean? Well, I think we just accepted it. There's not much you can do about it, is this? <laughs> to be honest, we quite enjoyed lockdown. As the lockdown progressed, it was really great to be with family. It was really great. I've got three young daughters here who are they, they kind of do do what they're directed by the by by the adults. So I, I don't know if it impacted them too much. I mean, they got to uh, not go to school for six weeks or something, which I don't think was a terrible experience for them. I still managed to run my mask business from home during lockdown, but I couldn't go anywhere because I'm over seventeen. So we had to do everything contactless. David would go down to the factory and he would show me on the camera some fabric we already had. And I'd say, bring that home and bring that home and bring that home. And we eventually ran the business out of my spare room. I think I, I, I actually enjoyed it. By the you know, third week, I was, I was really in the mode of uh, getting in there, mixing up, cooking with the kids and, and just doing general things, exercising out. It was great, it was a good time. You know, those boundaries of um, personal and and business and work, they they get clouded anyway, you know. But there are times we we have general rules around, you know, after six o'clock we're not talking shop. The rest of my family's in Australia, so um, yeah, they're still going through um, social distancing and it's a bit it's a bit less attractive there than what it is here I think simply because of the um, you know the different states and the different reactions that each health, state health department had you know I, I think with be, being in the provinces I don't think you know may, maybe if the kids had been locked down again here uh, in Hawke's Bay then that might have caused a bit more um, distress but yeah we're, we've done pretty well in, in Hawke's Bay so they're okay big component of land surveying is obviously survey the land and it was like our feet had been literally nailed to the ground. Being in the administration side of things we could continue uh, working and doing our, our work from home. We're fortunate where we are in our factory because we don't really have a lot of um, clients working in the showroom. So that was well controlled at that area. We're quite fortunate and I only really stumbled on it because I went into my local pharmacy to pick up a prescription and I had a, a mask in my handbag and I thought I might just suggest to them that they might like to buy something. And that grew into quite a, we were very busy supplying them. You know, from my side of the things like Zero and um, Tidy Works, for instance, with the, um, the surveys putting their time into the time management system and whatnot, that wasn't a problem because that was all all cloud based. We'd already started with, you know, sanitizer hand washing stations and washing down of touch points in the in the office and the warehouse. We had to run everything sort of rem remotely and use couriers and we became an essential service because mask making was considered essential. So we were able to get deliveries to the house ahead of other people who weren't doing something that was important. That was quite an advantage for us. Our sales cycle from the time somebody contacts us 
to the period we were actually delivering in a supply of goods can be from six months to years. So the lockdown effect was actually just a hold on production. It was, it was really frustrating and it was like your income, someone just going, right, that's it. Once we knew that uh, Melbourne's outbreak was getting serious, it was a, a pretty fast order to ensure that um, you know our orders weren't held up at the docks. Generally, because our sales cycle is a long process, we we actually won't see the effect of that shutdown possibly until about November this year. November. Our production staff weren't working, so it was just uh, giving them phone calls. Uh, and um, making sure that they were coping all right. Big considerations around, you know, cash flow and how you're going to pay, the, how we were going to pay the staff. The business was disastrous. It's very difficult to know how long that will take, how long people can withstand it. Because if we weren't doing the masks, and they probably won't keep us going forever either. So I have to always diversify. It's the only way to survive in a business. I mean, we, we got the wage subject, which was a great thing, um, and it, that helped all the staff get through. But one of the things that we decided as directors, I have another, there's another director, uh, Joe, we decided to do a cut on ourselves first, see how that goes, and if we need to push it, keep pushing it down, down the ladder, we will. Um, but thankfully, we didn't need to. The response in New Zealand has, has been probably more effective. Um, and that's probably also helped. New Zealand's in a good position to just keep going. We've just got to keep moving forward. I think we're all pretty, you know, wait and see. It is no question, it is very tough for a lot of businesses out there. I just hope that our economy gets back. I mean, you know, I've got friends that have got businesses here that have, you know, and they're in retail and they're doing it hard. And um, hospitality, yeah. But time will tell. My thing is, I kind of see myself as a captain of a sailing ship going through really rough water, and I've got to keep my crew. Being financially prepared and preparing staff, um, that that really got us through, um, and we, we uh, emerged relatively unscathed from lockdown. So we, we're quite grateful for that. I just feel um, a lot of gratitude and respect for my staff and my clients and and the team and. We'll move forward out of this. That's what we've got to do as, as business owners. We've got to say, right, what are we, how are we going to adapt to this? How are we going to diversify? Most people have been pretty amazing. And I, because of that, I mean, I have to keep this. So that's the plan. I think COVID-19 is going to be around for a lot longer yet. I think if one small New Zealand typical business owners see the future, create a future, they will achieve it. They'll get there. It's tough, but you can do it. Don't look short term. Always look long-term, have that long-term vision, and then you make it.